In the world of gaming, one man stands out as a beacon of creativity and innovation, Shigeru Miyamoto. The visionary behind some of gaming's most iconic characters, Mario, Link from Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, and countless others. For all of the characters that he makes, he follows a simple set of rules that we're going to explore. To follow along, we're going to create a game that fits in with those rules and see what we come up with. While most studios start out with a story, a certain emotion that they want to convey, or an attempt to simulate some part of our world, Miyamoto's philosophy starts with something far more fundamental. The character. Every time Miyamoto is creating a game, the character in that game needs to have a new gimmick or way to play. When Gunpei Yokoi, one of the designers for Mario, would create games, he'd start off with a dot and think up of ways to move that dot in a fun manner. The fun thing to do in Mario is to jump around. It's so important that if you hold the button while Mario is jumping, his max height is higher than if you just click it. That was done just so you can hold the jump button for dear life in hopes of making it to the next platform. Sometimes players are even light too, so their character controls just feel a little bit better. An example of this is when Super Mario 64 was being created. Miyamoto realized that controlling a 3D character is far more difficult than controlling a 2D character, so a lot of lying or leniency was taken. If Mario jumps and he doesn't quite make it to the next platform, the game will give just that little bit of leeway and allow it. Minute details like this are littered in every game that Miyamoto creates to make his lively characters more intuitive and easy to control. The character that we're creating, Chu, his main controls are being able to walk around but not jump and also have the ability to pick things up. There's no need to add extra things that will just confuse the player. Any world that Miyamoto creates must be intuitive for the player. Players can't be guessing what to do. Prime example of this is in Super Mario in World 1-1, which was interestingly enough done last. Anyways, Mario started off to the far left, leaving you with one option, and that's to go right. Goomba then enters the screen from the right, and you can't run off to the left. The camera actually won't let you. You can either jump on him or over him. Goomba was actually specifically made for World 1-1, and the whole reason was because of how simple he is to get through. At first, Koopa Troopa was there, but they found having that extra action of Mario kicking the shell was just too much. Miyamoto cared a lot about the world and the characters being intuitive. So much so that he would watch playtesters play, and he would not say a word. He would just watch them and see how intuitive the game is. And if it wasn't, he'd go back and redo parts of the world until he got it right. In our game, the office is the first level. And our character is very much constricted by the map to entice the player to make the correct choices. After the world building is done and the character is done, then the story is built. Miyamoto's stories often come from gameplay features. As a matter of fact, most of the time he thinks about the story and the main character at the very end. Most of his stories are very simple, like Mario being a copy of Popeyes, which they couldn't get the rights for. In an effort to keep the story simple as he does, our character Chu is stuck in a testing facility and must find a way out. With the steps that we've completed, we should have a character and a world that are connected, fun to play, and fit Miyamoto's philosophy. With that being said, here's what we have. Miyamoto's worlds aren't beautiful because of the intricate stories or anything like that, but it's beautiful because of how connected we feel to the main character that we're controlling. There's a reason that Miyamoto took so much time in creating Mario, and it's because he's the main focus of the game. He didn't need a supporting cast of characters, and even if he did, he couldn't, because technology was just not there yet. I have the game below, and all the sources I used if you want to find out more about Miyamoto and the great team at Nintendo.